the central limit theorem, one of the main results in all of theoretical statistics, which says that if you take distributions of just about any size or shape and add them up or average them, then usually you'll get approximately a normal distribution. The normal distribution magically, it seems, sort of pops out of thin air. When sampling from a normal population, our statistical theory tells us that the theoretical sampling distribution of the sample mean will also be another normal distribution. And we notice that uh, this smooth theoretical curve seemed to fit quite well with our empirical sampling distribution of the sample mean. Now let's look at populations of a different shape, say a rectangular population. And let's take samples of size 3, so artificially small samples. And here we're taking successive samples and dropping down the means to form the dance of the means for samples of size 3. And we're going to collect these into the mean heap down at the bottom. Of course, with such small samples, the dance of the means is extremely frenetic, extremely wide. And we'd expect the sampling distribution of these means to be correspondingly very wide, a large standard error when you have very small samples. But what will the shape of this sampling distribution be, given that we don't have a normally distributed population, but rather a rectangular or uniform distribution population? Here's the empirical sampling distribution of those sample means building up nicely, and the smooth curve, the theoretical sampling distribution, if the uh, sampling distribution is well fitted by a normal distribution. And so far, that smooth curve, the normal distribution, does seem to fit the pile of means pretty well. We've now taken uh, 400 samples, each of size n equals 3, and our theoretical sampling curve still looks to fit really very well the empirical mean heap, this pile of green dots. Well, here we're approaching uh, 600 sample means. And again, we have very good fit between the smooth curve and the mean heap, except perhaps in the tails. And of course, uh, the mean of a sample of size 3 from this distribution can't be smaller than this lower boundary or greater than this upper boundary. So the curve fits really surprisingly well, I think, except for in the extreme tails. This is an illustration of the central limit theorem which says that whatever the shape of the population, almost without any limit, then if you take independent samples, the sampling distribution of the uh, sample mean will be very close to uh, a normal distribution, no matter what the shape of the population, provided only that sampling is all independent. And it will be closer to a normal distribution as you take larger and larger samples. But here, even with samples as tiny as n equals 3, we get really quite a close approximation. OK, let's try a distribution, a population distribution with a different shape, a skewed distribution. And I'm going to take samples of size 6, and I'm going to make it really skewed, setting the skew parameter to 0.7, samples of size 6. And I'm going to drop down the sample means. So this is the dance of the means for samples of size 6 from this highly skewed population. What will be the shape of our sampling distribution? And the curve, as usual, is calculated according to the statistical model uh, as a normal distribution. And the question we're asking is, does this normal distribution fit the empirical sampling distribution, the mean heap, the pile of sample means from this rather strange population? Well, there's uh, the mean heap of 400 sample means, and I think it's pretty clear that the 
normal distribution does a reasonable job of approximating, but the mean heap does have skew, not nearly as strong skew as the population, but there is a tail out to the right, there is a hump a bit to the left of the normal distribution, and there's a pretty much empty left tail of our normal distribution there. So the central limit theorem is giving us a sampling distribution, an empirical sampling distribution here that's distinctly closer to normal than our population, but it's uh, not really normal. If we took samples of larger size than n equals 6, then it will get closer and closer to normal. So the central limit theorem tells us that we will get a sampling distribution of the sample mean that is approximately normal, and closer approximation as the samples get bigger and bigger, provided that all the influences we're adding up, these different points in a sample, are independent. In nature, quite often, certainly not always, but quite often, if you go out and measure biological sorts of things in the world, you get a distribution that's fairly close to a normal distribution. And it may well be that this is not a fluke, because many biological things are probably influenced by the sum of a whole lot of little influences, many which may be more or less independent, and so adding them all up by the central limit theorem gives you something like a normally distributed result. The normal distribution seems to come out of thin air because of the central limit theorem. It seems to reflect something fundamental about the way the world works. Why do we care about the central limit theorem? There are two main reasons. The first is that uh, our statistical model, really the critical point is that we assume usually that the sampling distribution of whatever statistic we're dealing with, say the sample mean, is approximately normal. And the central limit theorem tells us that even if out in the world the populations we're dealing with are not normal, then most likely the sampling distribution that we're really interested in will be at least approximately normal. So that is very reassuring for, the for using the statistical model that we usually rely on. The second reason is that, well, if out there in the world a lot of populations, certainly not all, but if a lot of populations are reasonably close to normally distributed, this shape, then uh, that's even better reason, even more commonly will the sampling distribution that we're really relying on will be very close to normal. So that again, good news for the statistical model that we usually rely on. So three cheers for the central limit theorem.